I think it's unfortunate. I'm not going to sit up there and disrespect the great Larry Bird. The man knows basketball. He was a great player. He was a Hall of Famer. Uh, he's one of the guys that, that deserves consideration to be on the Mount Rushmore uh, of NBA uh, you know, of NBA stars throughout, throughout the history of the game. Uh, but this particular decision, um, I respectfully disagree with him. I think Frank Vogel got screwed over here. Uh, the only season that they have not made the playoffs under the Frank Vogel regime was last year when they were 38 and 44 because of Paul George getting injured in USA ba playing for USA Basketball that summer. That's it. The man went to the semifinals. He went to two consecutive conference finals. If it wasn't for LeBron James and D. Wade and Chris Bosh standing in his way, he would have gone to the NBA finals. Um, and this year, he lost a tough seven-game series in the first round to the Toronto Raptors. Larry Bird says he wants a more up-tempo uh, system because in the years where Frank Vogel was coaching in the playoffs where they went 31-30 and 30, um, in the postseason in his, in his tenure there, they only averaged like 97.6 points per game. Well, whose fault is that? You're going to tell me that it's Frank Vogel? You're going to tell me that Frank Vogel decided to exercise and employ, you know, strategies and systems that Larry Bird and, 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 and Kevin Pritchard and, and you know, and, and Donnie and all of those guys uh, did, not implement, did not want him to implement? He listens to them. So I, I look at it from the perspective that Larry Bird didn't give Frank Vogel the personnel that he needed. You're trying to tell me that C.J. Miles and Monte Ellis, two guys I respect, they can play the game, along with George Hill. Uh, they got something to do uh, with, you know, um, Paul George rather being there. They're supposed to comply as the, the requisite level of help needed to play a more up-tempo style game. He's talking about holding against them what they've done offensively over the years. Didn't you have Roy Hibbert in the middle? Did you expect to run with Roy Hibbert? I mean, I just think that Larry Bird should be looking in the mirror and thinking about the personnel that you gave Paul George and, uh, to work with or Frank Vogel to work with and then go from there. Now, I'll have no problem if he decides to give Nate McMillan the head coaching job because I think Nate McMillan should, should be a head coach in the NBA. There's no question in my mind about that. Along with virtual others, Mark Jackson is another name that would come to mind because obviously he played at Indiana mm -hmm. with Reggie Miller and those boys. All I'm saying is, is that I think that Frank Vogel should not have been the one to fall for this. I think that he's being unfairly judged because you can only do what you have to, you only perform with what you have to work with. And he had Paul George. What else did he have to play a more up-tempo style game, which is the reason why Larry Bird says he's making the change. I think Larry Bird should be looking at Larry Bird far more than he should be looking at Frank Vogel. By the way, Frank Vogel could have had Kawhi Leonard, right? Remember that trade? Yeah. I, I assume it was a Larry right. Bird trade. I don't know if somebody else was involved in decision-making. But yep. remember, they virtually traded the, the ability to select Kawhi Leonard for George Hill straight up. That's, that's right. That's going to go down as one of the that's great right. steals in NBA well, history, right? And by the way, when, when I said Donnie earlier, I mean, obviously I was talking about Donnie Walsh. Donnie go Walsh, ahead. got it. So yes. right. I get it when Larry Bird says we need a new voice. Sometimes you just do. I watched Indiana a lot this year. I thought Paul George was trying to get right, you know, get 100% get confident on his destroyed knee, and it took a while. And he was a little hit and miss, a little inconsistent. Monte Ellis was very inconsistent. Some nights I would watch that team the night they beat my Spurs can, just soundly in, at Indiana. And they looked like they could challenge for the East. And then other nights, I just couldn't figure out what they were. Game seven, couldn't figure out what they were at Toronto. So I, I get that. But when I look back to your, your original point, man, Frank Vogel did a really good job with a pretty good team that kept running into a really good team in Miami because it was three straight playoffs. Remember 2012? Indiana was up two games to one on Miami with game four at Indiana. And remember that game? Dwayne Wade just took over in the second half. It was all-time clutch by Dwayne and saved their bacon. And they go on to win that six games. And the next year, they win in seven games at Miami and then six games in 2014. So it's, it's like sort of like Utah kept running into Michael Jordan or whoever kept running into Michael Jordan. You just, you're probably not going to win that one. 
So, and then Paul George got hurt, so you lost last year. I, it, it's probably not fair. Now, if, if, if I'm a big Nate McMillan fan, mm -hmm. obviously I'm a Mark Jackson fan. So if you tell me so those are the options, then then I'm I'm like, well, okay, I get it. But in the end, okay, Frank Frank Vogel's got a he, he got a little bit of a raw deal, and he got a raw deal for the last few days because he sort of. Remember Larry Bird just let him twist in the wind, said, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with him. Yep. So I, I didn't love that either. Well, I'm not going to knock him for that because he was being honest. Greg Dura for the Indy Star does a fabulous job of writing sports in that town. He asked him a question and Larry Bird was being honest. So I'm not going to knock Larry Bird for that. I'm just saying that Larry Bird should be looking in the mirror because he's the one that didn't give Frank Vogel the personnel necessary to implement the kind of system that Larry Bird wants implemented. I know Nate McMillan could coach. I'm looking at various other candidates and, and I'm not picking them before people run their mouth because they're black. I'm picking them because they're qualified. Yep. I don't give a damn about your color if you ain't qualified, okay? Yep. But let's be clear. Nate Miller can do the job. Mark Jackson has Indiana roots. Sam Mitchell has Indiana yeah. roots. Mike Woodson has Indiana roots. So there are viable candidates yeah. that Larry Bird should be looking for who would implement an offensive system, but even they are not going to be able to do but so much unless he gets them the personnel needed. I'm with you. We'll leave it there. When we come back, we're going to stay in the East. Are the Raptors being overlooked? Their head coach thinks so. Is LeBron James quick to be talking about playing the Heat in the next round? We'll break down what he said and react to it when we come back on First Take. Stay here. All right, Stephen A., like, love, or hate what Casey said? I have no problem with it whatsoever, but I will openly admit that I'm a bit prejudiced. Um, I've known Dwayne Casey for more than 15 years. I think he's doing an outstanding job. I think he's one hell of a coach uh, that falls under the radar consistently for the job that he has done. Uh, he has proven to be a very qualified and highly capable coach on the NBA level. And if you can find a better person as a coach in the professional sports, in the world of professional sports, please tell me who he is, Skip, because I don't know him. It doesn't get too much nicer than Dwayne Casey. He is class personified. Having said all of that, he's using this as a high uh, motivational tactic uh, because DeMar DeRozan, Kyle Lowry, Valanchunas, DeMar Carroll and the crew, they are the underdogs to some degree in this series, despite the fact that they're the number two seed in the Eastern Conference, having won 56 games this regular season. Why? Because their postseason success since 2000 has been virtually non-existent. So even though they won that first round series, because it took seven games, and with D-Wade and the Miami Heat playing at an elevated level combined with everybody craving a, 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 an encounter between LeBron James and his now former team, I think that's gotten uh, the headlines more so than anything else. And by virtue of that, Toronto, considering also the fact that they're not an American team, they're in Canada, you've got people looking past them because they're engaging in wishful thinking, not just basketball expertise as from an evaluation perspective. Mm. You know, I, I honestly think LeBron's getting a bad rap here. All he did was answer a question about what it would be like I agree. To, to face Dwayne Wade and company. And, you know, maybe politically correctly, he shouldn't have even acknowledged the question. Maybe he should have just said the, the patented... Boy, we, I, I can't even think about that. They've got to win their series. We've got to win this series. But he answered. And I think he answered from the heart about Dwayne, you know, that they've talked about it before. He said he hadn't dwelled on it, but maybe down the road, that, that would be great. So I, I, I don't know. You can't condemn LeBron for just sort of an honest, open, uh, you know, sort of a receptive type answer to a question but that maybe he shouldn't have answered. Yeah, but Dwayne Casey wasn't pointing the finger at him. He basically used it as a tool to highlight how nobody's talking about yeah. his Toronto Raptors. He didn't sit there and excoriate LeBron James in any way, nor did you, I, nor anyone else. We pointed out what LeBron said, yeah. and then we got a response from Dwayne Casey, and Dwayne Casey, quote, nobody has given us much of a chance. So in other words, he considers LeBron an extension of the yeah. populace out there who's looking forward to Miami and Cleveland, and he's saying, 
You can forget about us if okay, you want to, I, but I we it. believe in ourselves. No, I'm with you, but, but he was reacting to LeBron's quote. He was taking it personally. And because he is, was asked the okay, question. Okay, I got it. But Dwayne has been using the no respect theme throughout this playoffs. Remember when they fell behind Indiana and we both thought that they were in trouble and were going to lose that series? Then after they won game seven, he sat right down with the media after the game. First thing out of Dwayne Casey's mouth was, I told you. You know, uh, you guys all wrote us off. He's, he didn't call out anybody by name, but he's saying all you guys wrote us off. He said, I read all your stories, and I want to remind you, you had no faith in us. I'm, I'm putting words in his mouth a little bit. But that's what he did. That was the opening remarks of his post game. So he's still playing right. that, that no respect card. That's his theme of the playoffs. I'm good with it. I like that he's doing that. But guess who else last night could have had the same motivation off LeBron's quote? The Atlanta Hawks, right? They could have said, are we just chopped liver here? What about us? And game, you know, LeBron said it at the shoot-around before game two in Cleveland. And did it help Atlanta last night? How much motivation did they gain from LeBron basically talking about the next round against Miami? Well, None. Well, they're the ones that have to go up against LeBron. Of course they're going to keep their mouth shut. Because they got to deal with him. I know, but Toronto but, doesn't have to deal no, with but, him but yet. It's not the, so they're looking at it respond. like you counted us out. Okay, but but deep down, privately in Atlanta's locker room, you don't think they should have said, "Hey, he's got no respect for us. Like we got no chance, right?" It depends on who you're going against. It depends on who you're going against. Well, I, you know, you could you could talk, you could be a fighter, and you could talk junk about a lot of fighters. But when you got to go up in there against that knockout artist. You might be a little bit timid. Yeah, okay, but bottom line, I, I would give Toronto no shot against Cleveland. That's just me. He, Dwayne can say all he wants about no respect. I just don't think he could beat LeBron's team right now. Okay. All right, coming Not up, playing them yet. the Raptors took game one to overtime in dramatic fashion, only to lose to the Heat. What can we expect tonight in game two? That is next. We'll make our pick. Stay here.